it's going to be take the Chiefs' best game to beat the Ravens. The Ravens are really good. And um, when you look at the way you want to build a championship team, you want to have an elite quarterback, obviously, in Lamar Jackson playing well. And then you want to have physicality. Check. And the Ravens have both of those at a high level. Um, and and the, the Dolphins didn't have that. The Bills don't have that on defense. And the Ravens can do things defensively, like take away Travis Kelsey, that no one else can do. If you take away Travis Kelsey, what else do you have on the Chiefs offense that you can rely on? You know, like Ray She Rice can play, but you know, it's a rookie. He's not maybe MVS ready. MVS caught that. a ball last week. MVS caught two balls last week. I was right there. I was right at like, like the 30 yard line as he caught the first pass. I was in awe. I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> yeah, you were there. And then you were when he caught a ball, you were I, I was sitting there and I'm like thinking exactly of you. I'm like, oh my winning. God, he, he caught yeah. a ball in front of Jeff. It was right, it was right there. And then um on the flip side, like the Ravens run the ball very well, as we know. The Chiefs' defense is really good, really good, but they're not the best at stopping the run. Like, I just think that it, it will take the Chiefs' best effort in this game to get this done, and probably a little bit of the Ravens making some mistakes they haven't made this season. Um, and I am, as a Chiefs fan, I am concerned about the Chiefs' ability to win this game. And I actually think the number feels a tad short, Sammy. Like four, it, it, it feels a little short for this game. Do you think it's just because everyone's going to? Sort of say Mahomes covers his underdog, and we have to make this number a little shorter than it should be. Well, it was three on Monday, Tuesday, and that got blasted off the board. I mean, and, and people, let's be clear, people that are betting on Monday and Tuesday are not mostly public betters. I mean, those are the ones that are laying good chunks down. So they laid three, and you know, it's now four pretty much everywhere in Vegas. A lot of three and a half at the domestic shops, the DraftKings, the FanDuels, the Caesars. Um, but I, I think still there's going to be that push when we get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's when you're going to see people fly into Vegas and people, you know, start thinking about gambling on this game. And, you know, I would say probably 80% of people are going to bet when we get to the weekend. And a lot of those people are going to go, that's a lot of points for Mahomes, And it's, it's not a lot, but it's, it is points. And him as an underdog has been extremely profitable. What one loss in his career in like a nine or 10 game sample size that speaks to people and, and people look at what they perceive to be the better quarterback getting points and they're going to jump in. But this is really just like, if you're betting Kansas city, you're betting it for Mahomes and Reed. Like, I, I don't know what else your yes. edge is. You're betting it because you have the best quarterback and maybe the most talented quarterback of all time, like given the abilities that he has. But if you're betting the team, you're probably betting Baltimore because Baltimore is clearly the better team. So Look, I was thinking about this. I know this is kind of square, and I don't think I've ever brought up a parlay on this show. I don't hate a Baltimore-San Francisco money line parlay at even money. But you can do that right now. And, and I'm going to assume that Baltimore probably wins this game. Then you could do whatever you want in the night game. You have the big favorite at night, and maybe you can take seven and a half with Detroit. So then you got Baltimore in the house. You're halfway home. You have the Niners to win, and now you can middle it with a seven and a half point marker, you know, Niners win by four, you can win both. That's sort of where I'm at. The reality guys is that these are two of the tightest lines of the entire season. I made Baltimore three and a half. I made San Francisco seven. I can't sit here and pretend like there's a massive edge with either side. I mean, these are the tightest lines of the entire season. And I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to lay four because you could have laid three and that's, that's just how it shakes out. Sammy went from making fun of the bartender's place to stealing his place. Two money line parlay favorites. My goodness, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Look, we all do these shows. We try to say something, think of something nobody else has said, thought of. It, it, with Mahomes, it's just so simple. He's the best player at the most important position. Uh, you think about it. The last time this title game was not in Arrowhead. 2017, Blake Portals was the quarterback for the Jags in New England. Uh, imagine the odds you could have gotten on Patrick Mahomes when he was drafted to say, hey, he's going to sit for a year, then he's going to make six straight AFC title games. I mean, it's just unheard of. And look, I, I don't want to lay three and a hook against him. I, I know Baltimore's the better team. Baltimore's numbers against playoff teams are incredible, but they, they're they not invincible. They were tied 10-10 at the half against Houston. Houston missed a kick, could have had the lead at the half. Lamar looked flustered against the blitz. Uh, this is still a team that, you know, Stafford threw for 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. They're beatable. Should be a great game. When in doubt, take the points with Mahomes. I know it's square. I know it's sort of obvious, but that's where I'm at with this game, Bear. Yeah, I, I, I took Mahomes under 243 and a half. 
uh, passing yards because I, I think you're going to see a lot. Of, we we know that they don't necessarily trust all their wide receivers and MVS catching a couple of passes like we were joking about before with, with Jeff. The odds of that happening again, forget it. And and I think they know with their defense beat up a little bit, maybe keep Lamar off the field. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of those uh, design pass plays, the called pass plays, turn into Mahomes run. So I I don't hate. In addition to Mahomes under 243 and a half, uh, Mahomes rushing yards over, which I found at a 25 and a half, I think is where it was the other day, or last night at FanDuel when I when I put that in. So yeah, under 243 and a half pass yards over 25 and a half rush yards because I think that's probably the way that I think the Baltimore defense will allow Kansas City to play. The kneel downs last week, by the way. Oh. Mahomes over rushing hit with by one yard with with those kneel downs at the end and it should have cashed obviously with the long run he had uh, there at the game. I, I have Travis Kelsey guys under five and a half receptions. I, I know sometimes we don't want to fade Travis Kelsey in his moments, but he had a, a great game last week. Five catches, like that's it. Like he's at the point of his career where you know I think he's not a guy that we're going to expect later in the season as the playoffs get deeper to end up with seven, eight, nine receptions. He's just not at that point in his career. After every reception, he was off the field for a couple of plays. Like he's getting older. That's part of, of being an older football player. And I think the Ravens with Kyle Hamilton and with the linebackers they have are going to focus on taking away Travis Kelsey. If you take away Travis Kelsey, who's the next option? Is it Rasheed Rice? Is it MVS? Is it Hardman? Is it is it Pacheco? Is it Noah Gray? I mean, like, who, who is the you – know, like, that's this is why I think the Chiefs might have trouble. And why I think Mahomes and, and Kelsey under – like, if they take away Kelsey, okay, we're going we're gonna to double him. Who is next in line? And I do think there's a, there's a possibility too, and I haven't looked at the exact numbers for any time touchdown for one of these like Noah Grays, a Blake Bell, like just some random Chiefs receiver to catch a football for a touchdown because they're going to have to go somewhere else in this game and stay away from Kelsey um, and stay away from Rice. I mean, if they, if they decide to take away those two guys, who was left to catch the football for Kansas City? Stephon Page? But no. No, no, not no, so. It won't, no. be, it won't be stuff. Uh, I mean, Hart, I mean, Hardman, like, you try, I don't know. It's just, no, I don't know who that guy's going to be. Not Sky Moore. It's not MVS. Hardman, So I'd be really worried about the Chiefs. M MVS, playoff MVS, man. He shows up in the playoffs. I'll tell you that. Is is now the time, Sammy, to, we, we, we like looking at, we always, during the year, we talked about taking, investing and in building a portfolio with the Niners, with the Chiefs, which with whomever. Is now the time to bet Baltimore? to win the Super Bowl, to bet, to bet those look ahead lines where, where maybe Baltimore is a pick em or a one point dog uh, against, against San Francisco, because if that is the matchup that you're not going to be able to get Baltimore plus one, right? I get this feeling. Whoever wins the AFC game is going to be favored. Even if the chiefs pull it off. I mean, is Mahomes really, really? going to be a dog? Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I mean, it's possible. Not like a three point favorite. I mean, look, San Francisco is my highest power rated team right now, but that could change. And if Debo's not playing, I mean, their rating is just different. So I, I I'm writing a story about this for Fox. Tony Miller said the same thing. And I, I sort of agreed with him. And he said that he thinks any, any AFC team is going to be favored. So Take that for what it's worth. That's just one man's opinion, but I tend to agree. I mean, would, would we be stunned if Kansas City was a small favorite? I I wouldn't. I mean, it's it's Mahomes and Reed, and they have two rings already. It's just it's the reality. I mean, San Francisco is a better team, but you know, as we've talked about, Mahomes is the great equalizer. To answer your question, yeah, I think this would be the time you could bet Baltimore two to one. I was actually the other day, I was looking at uh, a parlay, Oppenheimer to win best picture, and uh <laughs> Ravens to win the Super Bowl. It was like 250. God, I like am I that. <laughs> well, Oppenheimer's not losing. I mean, to create a <laughs> nuclear explosion no. on video no. is like you're winning best picture. Um, and I fell asleep during Oppenheimer, but I know how it ends, right? We all know how it ends. Um, how? so how win. How'd you fall asleep? <laughs> it was so gripping. It was so gripping. It was when four and a half hours long. Finally That's why I close. fell asleep. It was great. That's why I fell asleep. No, well, wasn't so the... What was the what was the other movie that was like four four and a half hours long? The Oppenheimer was like was it that long? What was the uh the, Barbie? Barbie? No, no, not Barbie. The uh, Flower Moon. The Flower Moon. I heard was like four hours long, wasn't it? I didn't see I don't that. Know. It, it, it must Oppenheimer be nice to just watch and the Ravens. Will in, in the theater. <laughs> You no. can parlay Oppenheimer and the Ravens at two fifty if you're so inclined. If you're trying to be 
a degenerate like I am at this point. Um, but to the point, I want to go back. Throw Sabal, so throw Sabalenka over Quinn Win Jang in there too. Five dollar no favorite. I'll we'll give you a little there's bit there's of value. No value. <laughs> Travis Kelsey has caught a touchdown pass in 10 of his last 12 playoff games. And three of those times he caught two touchdowns. And I, I think Jeff is completely right. You know, inside the twenties, like from 20 to 20, he he's not the same guy, but still inside the red zone and inside the 10 and inside the five, Mahomes still looks for him and Reed still scripts for him and schemes for him. We might see that, that little shovel pass inside the two, Travis Kelsey to catch a touchdown, you could find plus a quarter, and to catch two, you could find nine to one. I'm not saying he's going to do it, but we could take advantage of the lessened appetite for Kelsey. I mean, Kelsey last year to catch a touchdown, minus 170, minus 190. Now you can get plus 125, and he caught two last week. So I, I think if there's one way to bet Kelsey, it's to take plus money on the touchdown. Yeah, if there's a prop I like, both quarterbacks to run. I, I think Mahomes, if he goes back to pass and all his guys are covered, nobody's open, uh, he could just take off and run. Big games, these quarterbacks tend to run more. And Baltimore plays man-to-man, -man, so uh, that, that leaves some more some more running angles open. Jeff, I'm curious because, uh, you know, we talk about Debo Samuel in the NFC game. The AFC game has a key injury. He's not on anybody's fantasy team, so people, you know, half the audience maybe hasn't even heard of him. But Joe Tooney, yeah. the guard for the Chiefs, one of the better guards, doesn't sound like he's going to play. Peck injury, how big is that for you? Well, it's, I mean, they said it's a strained pack. I, I hope he does play. I hope he hasn't practiced this week. It's a big loss. I mean, he he was their their best lineman on Sunday. The, the backup came in and did an okay job, but this is not the same defensive line he played in, in Buffalo. It's a huge loss for him, especially in a game where they probably want to run the football a little bit more, right, and, and protect Mahomes. That's why I think the, any of the Mahomes props, I'll talk about it in my best bet, but, like, the rushing props to me, Mahomes is going to have to be that guy in this game, right? He doesn't, he's not doing it as much as he is. He gets kind of older in the NFL, but if they want to win this game, Mahomes is going to have to do a lot with his legs. The, 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 the Tooney injury, the man coverage, not having guys open. Like those are all big issues. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the Tooney thing is a problem. I, I think, I think sometimes they put, you know, the injury report strain pack and it, it looked pretty bad. I mean, he got hurt on the, on the Pacheco yeah, touchdown dude. run. Uh, he got kind of just tossed and, he tore it right there. I, it it doesn't seem great. I'll put it like that. He might try to veteran it up and just be a wily veteran and figure out a way to play. It's a playoff game. He has two weeks off if they win. Um, but it's a it's a problem if he can't play. He's their best lineman. How how, how, how much? Uh, what's the painkiller threshold? Like 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 what what's what's the what what what's the medicine? What's the medicine? Tortle. Tortle? Yeah, how, how much are we shooting him up with on Sunday to be able to play? Just one tortle. Just one? Yeah, you don't you don't get more than one. <laughs> you get one toward all. You get one Can you block all. a three hundred pound man with a torn peck though? Uh, you can find. I mean, they would they would harness his shoulder so it couldn't move very right. much, and you would find a way. That's the thing. Like, as a veteran, you would be able to find ways to to get to get by. You slide the center toward you and pass protection. Uh, so I'm curious if he can make it work. Obviously, they said strain peck, just like they said Debo is. You know, the shoulder is not as bad, but. I looked, it looked worse. Like, I, look, I think a, 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 a few things to note with these injuries, right? Like, these are games these teams obviously had to win. And Debo did not come back in the game. Joe Toon did not come back in the game at the end of the game as the team's trying to win this one out. If, if they were, like, quote-unquote, okay, they probably would have tried to play still, right? And, and they weren't able to do that. So that, that, that concerns Good me point. for both those players being able to finish this game. Um, I want to piggyback one last thing on what Sammy said about the AFC versus NFC. We're going to either have Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes against Brock Purdy or Jared Goff. Like, I kind of have a lean of where I'm going in the Super Bowl right now. I mean, how often do we see, like, the lesser quarterback, like, by far, the lesser talent quarterback win the Super Bowl? Foles, obviously, did it. But, like, wh wh when have we seen the lesser, like, by far, like, not, not you, know, you know, Burrow, Stafford, maybe Burrow's a little bit better, Stafford wins. But when it comes to, like, Mahomes or Lamar Jackson against Jared Goff or Brock Purdy, the talent gap in those quarterbacks is pretty large. It, it 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 does it does feel that and that probably gets back to what you were talking about earlier, Sammy, where why the AFC would would be favored in that game because of the edge uh, at the quarterback. If, if we don't get Baltimore, Kansas, if we don't get Baltimore, San Francisco, who uh, who's going to screw it up? Which of the two favorites is more likely to lose there, Sammy? Do you think? Oh, Baltimore because of Mahomes for sure. 
Um, a Baltimore Detroit Super Bowl would be freaking wild, though. Can you imagine if we get, you know, <laughs> those two fan bases in the Super Bowl? That's that's going to be wild. Um, but I mean, just it, it's an easy answer for me, Bear, because Baltimore is three and a half, four, and the other team has Mahomes. Um, look, the Lions could win. The Chiefs could win. Um, wouldn't that be something, too, if we had a repeat of the opening game of the right. season? When Detroit didn't Detroit win twenty one to twenty beat Kansas City on uh, on ring yes. night or banner night and what if that's the finale what if that's the opening and the closing I mean look nothing is impossible I'll say it again these are these are one offs at the end of January and both spreads are seven or less so it's it's not like anything is impossible and the ball's not even round it's single elimination and it's not a round ball so it, it it doesn't matter who's better or worse if you're minus 2 in turnovers like if you're minus 2 in turnovers you're probably going to lose that that's like the most important stat and we don't know how that stat's going to go so yeah, yeah I, I think to Sammy's point, it's interesting. I can't, boy, Baltimore, San Francisco, I think would be a pick em. It's hard. Like they played Christmas night. That's one month ago today. The line was six and a half. Can you really have like an eight, nine point adjustment uh, based on that? I, I don't know. I do think the AFC might be just better than the NFC based on all these head to heads. You know, Baltimore killed Detroit. They killed San Francisco. San Francisco lost to the NFC, to the AFC a few times. They lost to PJ Walker. Um, I don't know. The one that looks a, a little off, if you look at the look ahead lines, Baltimore laying three and a half to Detroit, if that's the Super Bowl, that looks light. Baltimore, I would think that would Seems get bet up. I know there'll be a lot of sentiment. Yeah, really, really low. Remember, they beat them by about a million points back in, I think, late October. So that's one that seems light. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.